Have you ever heard the phrase, it's on the tip of my tongue? I know the answer. I just, it's in my brain. I just can't find it. It's, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's an English saying that means, I know, I know this but I can't find the information in my brain. And usually we remember the information hours or days later. But the tip of the tongue phenomenon is something that we experience when information is encoded, but we can't retrieve it. So sometimes we forget things because even though it's in there, we can't find it. That's one form of forgetting. So. What I want you to understand about meaning and memory is that in order to really remember something, you have to understand it first. If you don't understand it, if you don't work with it, you won't know how to encode it, you won't store it, and you won't find it when you try to retrieve it. So meaning, understanding is fundamentally important for memory. So if you're a student, okay, but how does this change things? Well, I hope what you can do is use this knowledge to change the way you approach your classes. If you go into a class having done the reading or even just scanned the textbook or the reading so you know what the topics are and you've looked at the pictures maybe in the graphs, you're going to bring more understanding to a lecture. You're going to remember it better and you will not have to study as long. That's pretty cool, right? You put in five, ten minutes before a lecture and you save yourself half an hour or an hour or more of study time later. Okay. There are other causes of memory. So long ago, researchers thought that we forgot things because the things just sort of disappeared out of our brains. But now researchers focus not on that, but interference. And interference is essentially what it says that when you learn one thing, it interferes with your ability to learn new things and it interferes with your memory for old things. So it goes both directions. There's both proactive and retroactive interference, and I want you to know both. So proactive interference, pro, forward, means that old stuff comes forward and makes it harder for you to learn something new. So, for example, Let's say that I decide to take a trip to Ireland. I, in the US, I have a lot of experience driving, but we drive on the right-hand side of the road. In Ireland, they drive on the left-hand side of the road. So when I go to Ireland and I rent that rental car so we can drive around Ireland, it is really hard to remember to stay on the left side of the road. Why? Proactive interference. All my lifetime of experience driving on the right makes it harder for me to remember to stay on the left. That's proactive interference. The other one is retroactive interference. Retroactive interference is retro, going from now backwards. So retroactive interference is when what you learn now inhibits or disrupts your ability to access old memories. So let's say that I was in Ireland for a day, or day a week, driving around on the left-hand side of the road. I fly back to California, I get out of the LAX airport, I go to the parking lot, I get my car. Now I'm all messed up again. Now I want to drive on the left-hand side of the road in LA, which is really bad. Okay, so that's retro. Retro, proactive. Retro, pro. All right, let's go over them one more time. So proactive interference is a forward-acting kind of confusion. So. Examples of proactive interference would be if you call your current boyfriend or girlfriend by your ex's name, by your ex's name, yikes. Mm -hmm. Proactive interference, really problematic. So if you have that mistake, just explain it's proactive interference and not some fixation on your ex. Uh, another example would be, okay, once a year at CSUN, we have to change our passwords, right? should do it more than that, but at least once a year. What happens? You try to remember your new password, but proactive, all that old password makes it hard to remember your new password. The reverse, retroactive interference would be, I finally learned my new password, and then you ask me what my old password was. 
I don't remember because having learned my new password makes it harder for me to access my old password, retro, right? If, for example, you called your ex by your current boyfriend or girlfriend's name, that would be another example of retroactive interference. Okay, interference is a student's enemy. You hate interference. Interference is that feeling where you study something and it just, it's all mixed up in your brain. It's just soup and everything's confused with everything else. That's interference. How do you reduce interference, right? If forgetting is caused by interference, then what you want to do as students is reduce interference. And the answer is so easy. It's fabulous. Study before you go to sleep. That's all. That's all. When you study something and then you sleep, during that time where you're sleeping, you're not learning new things. So there's nothing to interfere with what you just studied. So that material really gets into your brain. We know that now from neuroscience too. If you measure brain activity during sleep, what happens? You're rehearsing what you just learned. So study, then sleep. Study, then sleep. This is, a, I'm showing you a graph from a, from a moldy oldie study. It's really old, but it's so simple and straightforward and I think important for students to get. Here's the study. Two groups of subjects. They're students, college students actually. Half the group studied a list of nonsense syllables right before they went to sleep. And the other half of the group studied the same list of nonsense syllables for the same amount of time, but they studied the list right before they went to class, so at the beginning of the day instead of the end of the day. And the researchers came back to both groups of subjects and uh, measured their memory either an hour after studying, uh, two hours, four hours, or eight hours. And let's go all the way out to the eight hour comparison here. What do I want you to see? I want you to see that the group that studied and then went to sleep, <laughs> they remembered uh, over 50% of the material. The group that studied and then went about their day, they only remembered about 10% of the material. So two groups, they spent exactly the same amount of time studying exactly the same amount of material, and they studied it in the same way, but one group went to sleep after they studied, and the group that went to sleep after they studied remembered four times more Okay, students, you have something important you need to remember? Study it before you go to sleep. Okay, come back and we're going to talk about an application of memory to law. If you are on a court and a, 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 somebody on that court case comes in and says, that's the killer, I saw him, I'm sure, should you believe him? Come back and find out.